In simple terms, hashing means taking an input of any length and returning an output of fixed length. In the context of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, transactions are taken as an input and run through a hashing algorithm that returns an output of a fixed length. Let's see how the hashing process works. For this exercise, we're going to use the Secure Hashing Algorithm 256, or SHA-256. In the case of SHA-256, no matter how big or small your input is, the output will always have a fixed 256 bits length. This is critical when dealing with a huge amount of data and transactions. Instead of remembering a large amount of input data, you can remember the hash to keep track. A cryptographic hash function is a special class of hash function that makes it ideal for cryptography. There are six properties that a cryptographic hash function needs to have in order to be considered secure. Let's go through them one by one. Property 1. Deterministic. This means that no matter how many times you input the same data, you will always get the same result. This is critical because if you get different hashes every time, it's impossible to keep track of the input. Property 2. Quick computation. The hash function should be able to return the hash of an input quickly. If the process isn't fast enough, then the system won't be efficient. Property 3. Pre-image resistance. Pre-image resistance states that it is infeasible to determine the input data based on the output hash. Notice the use of the word infeasible instead of impossible. For example, suppose you're rolling a die. Instead of getting a specific number between 1 and 6 when you roll, you instead get a hash value that corresponds to a specific number between 1 and 6. How will you be able to determine what the original number was? All you have to do is find out the hashes of every number from 1 to 6 and compare it with your result. Since hash functions are deterministic, the hash of a particular input will always be the same. This means you can simply compare the hashes and find out the original input. This is a trivial exercise when dealing with six possible inputs, but when working with even slightly larger datasets, the difficulty of guessing a hash increases exponentially. The only way to find the input from an output hash is through brute force, that is, by making pure, random guesses. So what happens if you use this method? If you spend every second of every day guessing hashes without sleeping, you would be guessing hashes for the rest of your life, and you would never even come close. Neither would your children if they did the same, or their children, or their children. So while it is possible to break pre-image resistance by brute force method, it takes so long that it doesn't even matter. Property 4. A small change in the input changes the whole output. Even the smallest change in input must have huge ramifications on the output. This is a critical function that aids in making the function pre-image resistant. Property 5. Collision resistant. Collision resistance means that each input will have its own unique hash. Having two different inputs that result in the same hash is known as a collision. No hash function is completely collision free, but much like the timeline of the brute force attack we described before, it takes so long that it doesn't matter. Property 6. Puzzle friendly. This is a pretty complex property, and it's represented in some form by this complicated looking equation here. But math is hard, so let's turn this into words and pictures. K represents a particular value chosen. In order to fit this property, the value has to be chosen from a significantly large distribution of points. To choose a number between 1 and 5, for example, would not be sufficient. Choosing a number between 1 and 1 septillion would be significant enough distribution for a cryptographic hash. This line here denotes concatenation. Concatenation means adding two strings together. If I were to concatenate blue and sky, then the result would be blue sky. So looking at the equation again, given a hash output of y and a randomly chosen point k, it must be infeasible to find an x value such that the combining of k and x will give hash output y. Ooh, math. So what does all this stuff mean in blockchains? Why does any of it matter? The blockchain is a sequence of blocks that contain data, and a hash pointer that points to its previous block, hence the chain in blockchain. A hash pointer contains the hash of all the data inside the previous block. This small tweak is part of what makes blockchain so revolutionary. Imagine a hacker attacks block 3 and tries to change the data. Because of the properties of hash functions, even a slight change in data changes the hash drastically. This means that any change made in block 3 will change the hash stored in block 2. This in turn will change the data and the hash of block 2, which results in changes in block 1, and so on. This is exactly how blockchains attain immutability. Any tiny changes in the data are immediately noticed and nullified by each preceding block. Essentially, the concept of hashing is a core part of what makes blockchains revolutionary and unique. Understanding how it works, as well as the security and efficiency it provides, is a key step towards understanding blockchain technology as a whole.